Jacob Hill, sometimes we need to change before doing a video, you know? I don't understand why we're wearing the same clothes all over again. What is this? Did we actually film this in the same day? We've just been here for a week and, you know, we like these clothes a lot. Yeah, we like the background, too. The same lamp is in the background. So <laughs> let's talk today about relationship red flags, okay? They're, they come up, like, I truly believe that there are relationship red flags that come up instantaneously in a relationship. There's yep. a warning sign. There's a little man that says, whoa, 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 whoa. Something's wrong here. We're waving the checkered flag, mm -hmm. okay? And all of a sudden we wave the red flag. Cars need to slow down and you need to pay attention. Now, we talked about this last night. The problem is people are fulfilling a relationship story. You meet somebody, you think they're fantastic, and instead of being open and authentic and showing your true self, right, you create a relationship story based on you want what you want that person to be. Mm -hmm. And you go blind at that point, right? Yeah, anything that doesn't fit the story didn't really happen or there's an excuse for it. I know, so the red flags are really big, which means that the real person is showing themselves. So yeah, you and I are, are very much people that have been doing the, you know, in this industry for a reason to not show our fake side, right? Not yeah. to show our... First mm. of all, it's exhausting. Well, you yeah. have to remember too much stuff. When the representative is showing up on every single day, you literally have to like do what? You have to like keep track of what the representative promised and what the representative said. And you're robbing them of showing who you truly are. I guess that's probably a different topic though. Yeah, I mean, we can go into that too, but let's talk about when the red flag shows up the very, very first time. This is something I want all of you to do. I want you to keep a red flag journal. I like that. And a yeah, red flag journal is very basic, okay? It's a piece of paper, it's a Word document, it's a book, whatever it might be, and you write down the red flag that came up. Because when that red flag comes up for the very, very first time, you need to watch that red flag because they're not aware that the red flag has fully come up. Now you can confront them and ask them what this all means and so forth and see about how they react to it, but what I like to do is like to write down the red flag. So, excuse me, I write down the red flag and then I see when it comes up again. Because mm -hmm. usually the red flag shows its ugly, evil self. Almost always. Almost always within a week. You write it down the second episode. What triggered them, okay? What went on during this red flag moment? Um, what you said to them, how they reacted, um, what their behavior was afterwards, how you work through the conflict, okay? Mm -hmm. what, how they took responsibility for their actions in this red flag moment. Mm -hmm. Did they take responsibility for their actions or did they try to self, or they just try to turn the finger around and blame you on this whole stuff? Then when the red flag moment comes up for the very, very third time, thank you, this fly likes me. <laughs> when the red flag moment comes up for the third time, write it down again and then ask yourself, why are you going forward with this type of behavior? Mm -hmm. What else do you want to add to this? Um, I would say watch how people treat other people. Yes. I mean, whether that's the wait staff, whether it's their mother, whether it's the random homeless guy they walk by and yell, you know, get a job. That's coming to you eventually. I, I guarantee you it's coming to you. Um, it's very hard to be one way in life and, you know, be kind with one set of people and then turn around and be a total asshole to someone else. Like, it all merges together at some point. Well, there's also a thing too about that too. When you, when you, this fly is just like <laughs> hanging out. He wants like, to be on video. He knows how to flirt this fucker. <laughs> so there's another thing too about that. It's like everything comes back at you. So look at the way. There's another red flag moment a lot of people missed. How do they talk about their ex? We're all, you know, people mm -hmm. say never talk about your exes. That's bullshit because you know they're what? They're part of your life. They're part of your life, and there's no reason. The ex story is the ex story for whatever reason it is. Okay, mm -hmm. and you know you got to listen carefully because to me, I want to hear about the ex mm -hmm. because maybe one day I'm going to be the ex. So I want to hear how she's talking about me point. in the future, right? So I want to hear like, you know, my ex was an asshole, but at that time of my life, you know, I that's all I thought I deserved and. I, it's all about I, and I really learned a lot from him. There were some amazing things about him, but I allowed him to treat me a certain way because I was working through some stuff with my parents and my childhood and other things like that. So yeah, it's not, does, everything doesn't have to be fake positive, you know? Everything doesn't no, have to be like, be real. be real, but it's what you want to hear from somebody, what they got out of it, how they took responsibility for that. Because if someone's taking no responsibility, like if I hear somebody who goes into victim mode and goes, I was cheated on, I did this, he did this, he did that, he did this. Because then I know what I'm looking for then in that moment is that I'm gonna see somebody who's not taking responsibility for anything. So the minute mm -hmm. any conflict happens, which it will happen in the relationship, mm -hmm. I'm going to be realizing at that moment that that's going to be me. Interesting. You know, so. Future projecting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm paying mm -hmm. attention. That's gonna be me who breaks their heart. That's gonna be me who, 
who is the villain. The in bad that. guy. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. be the villain in their victim story. So I, I pay careful attention to that. And that, to me, is a very big relationship red flag. And that you can expose right from the get-go. True. Yeah. Sex. You can ask them what the, you know, what, what the best sex is. You can hear their version of the best sex. And you can know whether or not that's good enough for you. There's so many, re there's so many things that we can talk about on a date instead of exchanging resumes. Wait a second. Uh. 2011, you were single? I can't believe that. <laughs> that was the year of the relationship, according to the Chinese <laughs> astrological. I need to go and contact other people. But anyway, how can people get your wonderful advice? Uh, they can find me at masterofflinedating.com. And I uh, also wanted to add one thing. Please I, do. I like the, uh, the saying, leave the baggage, bring the lesson. I like that. Leave the baggage, bring the lesson. And I'm going to add a saying on top of that. But when I date somebody, I like to carry on people. <laughs> I'm like George Clooney up in the air. So if I'm dating somebody and we're going away for two weeks, it's like we're doing, we're doing carry on. Because that's like 45 minutes of waiting for luggage in a strange place that we can avoid and we can already be on the beach hanging out hanging out sipping cocktails I don't really sip cocktails but they might I might want to get them drunk after a 12-hour flight take advantage of them anyway subscribe down below